Okay, guys. So last time we saw Article two point six, and that was the conditional probability. Actually, conditional probability that was the base for the base theorem. That's what we are going to see today. So Bayesian statistics, that is the collection of all collection of all the tools that is used in a special form of statistical inference, which applied in a in the analysis of the experimental data in many practical situations and science and engineering. This Bayesian rule that is highly useful in chapter number 18, unfortunately, we will not go over this chapter in this course. We will go over up to chapter 10 or maximum 11, we will see, but 18, but those who are interested to proceed further, to go further in the same statistical engineering course in that case, he or she can refer that part to. So before we start this one, I just would like to explain to you what we mean by the total probability. So total probability, for total probability, I just would like to go for one of the examples which we covered last time. Last time I mean to say that uh, one of the examples we covered that was based on the employed, employment, employed people in the town, unemployed people in the town, employed men and women, total number of men and women, of the town out of this total men and women out of total population how many men were there how many women were there and how many of men and women they are employed how many of them are not employed so that was the example we saw last time so the same example i just would like to refer today so let me just go for this one uh, let me open that page i think that is the page number if i'm not wrong page number 50, 63. Yes. So look at over here. This is the uh, data given over here. Employed, male employed 460 out of 600. 600 people are employed. Female 140. Total population is 900. Total male and female, sorry, total male employed and, uh, and unemployed, there are 500. Total female employed and un unemployed. 400, 4 plus 5, that is equal to 900. Total employed, 460 plus 140, 600. Total unemployed, 40 plus 260, that is equal to 300. Total is 900. So both the ways we have 900. That means we can say that we did this thing that man, M is means man is chosen and E means the one chosen is an employed. So we are looking for the probability of man given that he is an employee. He, he is employed, right? So probability of male, male is over here, man, because the male, that is 460. And uh, 460, given that he is employed, how many people are employed? 600, so 460 divided by 600. Similarly, total number of female employed, 140 divided by 600. Total number of male unemployed, 40 divided by 300. Total number of uh, female unemployed, 260 divided by 300, like this. And suppose somebody says that uh, uh, total number of male employed that is actually given in this way, uh, whatever we figured it out, that is given in terms of this conditional probability too. Total number of employed that is given like this, 460 divided by 900 out of total population. Total number of uh, unemployed that is equal to 300 divided by 900. So all these things that is known to us and that's what we are going to refer over here in this uh, example too, for the total probability. So let me now again go back and let's go for total probability. Okay, page number I would like to go for this page. So base rule and total probability. <clears throat> you can see over here the example, whatever I told you. Now we are going to add one more portion. We know the total number of employed and unemployed. So suppose I would like to divide my employment and unemployment into in terms of one cell. I mean, this is a Venn diagram. So you can see over here, just don't count this set E. But here it is, don't count the set A, but total is your population and here it is E and here it is E dash. E dash means E complement. E means employed, E complement means not employed, unemployed. So those who are employed over here, naturally they have nothing to do over here. Once people, male or a female is an employed, you can, you can say that, you cannot say that he or she is unemployed and vice versa. Suppose she is or he is un unemployed. You cannot say that he or she is employed. So that is nothing is common over here. So that's why I divided the set into two parts. So one is employed, one is unemployed. And if you combine employed and unemployed, you're going to get the total number of population. Now, now, 
I would like to draw one set over here with which contains some of the people, those who are employed, some of the people, those who are unemployed. Here it says that, look at over here, look at my cursor. Suppose that we are now given the additional information that 36 of those employed. So 36 of those employed and 12 of those unemployed are the member of Rotary Club. So this A set is nothing but the member of Rotary Club in which 36 people are employed. So E intersection A. Now all the employed, total number of employed are 600. All 600 are not the member of Rotary Club, but out of the 612 people, maybe male or female they are the they are the member of rotary club same over here that not 12 i would say 36 they are the member of uh, rotary club and another 12 people those who are unemployed total unemployed man that was 300 out of this 300 12 people they are the member of rotary club so that means there is a common part rotary club is a common part including this one and this one so that's what we are looking for the total probability and suppose as I told you, the total number of employed 600 divided by 900 from the previous section example on page number 63. Now, if I ask you that, if I ask you to find the probability of total number of, I mean, probability of a person who is chosen, he is a member of Rotary Club, given that he is employed. The Rotary Club and employed. That means this part, this just this part, inside this circle, only this part of left side of the line, this part, and that is given 36. So 36 out of 600, so that is three over 50. Same way, total number of uh, EDES, EDES is nothing but uh, unemployed, right? So you can see over here how many unemployment, unemployment from the previous example was 300. Out of 300, uh, 300 out of 900. So three out of 900 means one third. And now we are looking for the probability of a person who is chosen, who is a member of a Rotary Club, given that he is unemployed. That number is given over here, 12. So 12 divided by 300. 300 people, they are unemployed, right? So that is 1 over 25. Once we have this one, then after we can say like this, uh, let me just take this cursor other side so that you can read this one clearly. Oh, it doesn't go other side. Okay, that's fine. Let me, okay, this is better. Okay, now theorem 2.13. This is called the total probability theorem. Let even B1, B2, B3. Here we have just, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just would like to go for this one. E dash. And now if I combine this one, look at over here. Now what we are looking for, we are looking for the total number of uh, probability of a person who is chosen from our, who is a member of a Rotary Club. That means this probability is given like this, P E intersection A and P E dash intersection A. E intersection A and E dash intersection A. Let me just share my uh, whiteboard so that idea will be more clear to you. So let me share my whiteboard. And now I would say that uh, I'm looking for, as I told you that uh, probability, we can write A as the union of the mutually exclusive events, E intersection A and E dash intersection A. And that's why my, uh, let me draw the picture. If I draw the picture like this, this is my total set. And here I would like, I divide it like this into two parts. This is my employed part and this is my unemployed portion. And if I draw one figure like this, suppose this is my set A and set A is nothing but the members of the Rotary Club. So event A, that individual selected is a member of a Rotary Club, right? This individual, A means individual, selected is a member of member of Rotary Club, right? And you can see over here, as I told you, that once the people uh, person is employed, that means it has nothing to do over this side and the vice versa. That means this is the part of E intersection A and this is the part of unemployed intersection A means unemployed and member of a Rotary Club. So I can write like this, my set A is nothing but E intersection A, E intersection A, union, 
E intersection A complement. That means this portion, this portion, and this portion, and this portion. That is my set A, very natural. So I'm looking for probability of this set A that is equal to probability of E intersection A, right? Probability of E intersection A union E intersection A complement. Let me put the big bracket over here. Now you know this thing that probability of suppose some set A union B that is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B from article 2.5 additive, additive rule addition. But if you are A and B, both the events, if A and B are mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive. That means nothing is common. A intersection B is equal to empty set. That means this portion will be gone and you're going to get probability of A union B that is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. Exactly same concept we are going to use over here that probability of E intersect because E intersect this, both the events, they are mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive. That means I can write that is equal to probability of E intersection A plus probability of E intersection, I think it is E dash intersection A, E dash, inter, not this one, sorry. E dash intersection A, right? Unemployed, my bad. Uh, eraser. intersection A, intersection A. Okay, so E dash intersection A because mutually exclusive. But this event, E intersection A, that is the, this is the conditional probability. Conditional probability, article 2.6. Yeah, conditional probability, both. So that is equal to, I can write this one as probability of E and probability of A given E plus probability of E dash and probability of A given E dash, A given E dash. Just now I told you that probability of E is nothing but probability of E, total number of employed people, 600 out of 900, so that is equal to two third. Probability of E dash, 300 out of 900, so that is equal to one third. Probability of A given E, that means employee, uh, probability of a member of a Rotary Club, given that he is an employee, that is equal to 36 divided by 600 and 36 divided by 6 and that is 3 divided by 50. Yes. And probability of A given E dash, that is equal to 12 divided by uh, 300 from the previous section example. So it is one over 25. If you plug all these values over here, so here you're gonna get two over three, and then after you're gonna get here, it is uh, three over 50 plus probability of E dash that is equal to one third. And here it is probability of A given E dash that is equal to one over 25. And if you use your calculator, you're gonna get one number that is probably I would say four over 75, something like that. So that is the answer. That is the answer. One can visualize the same thing using the T diagram also. T diagram, I mean to say that suppose you have probability of, uh, let me change the color. So probability of uh, what? Uh, PE, probability of E, that is equal to two third. And uh, this is my employed and here it is unemployed, right? So probability of E dash that is equal to one third. And then after I can go over here and suppose here it is A, so probability of A given E that is equal to 350. And here it is again A, so probability of A given E dash that is equal to one over 25. 1 over 25. So if you take the product of this and this and this and this and in between addition signs, so you'll get the answer. So that's what we mean by this one. So here I have just mentioned, I just took two events. One is employed, one is unemployed. This way, in general, I have multiple events like this. Suppose I have one uh, space like this and suppose I have B1 over here, then B2 over here. I have B3 over here. 
then I would say that I have suppose B4 here, B5 here, B6 here, B7 here, and blah, 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 dot, 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 like this. And suppose I have some event like this, event A, something like this. So this is my event A. And if you are looking for this probability that is called the, instead of two events, I'm extending the same idea for K number of events, you can say. So the theorem is something like this. Let me now share my, let me save this file. And then after, let me again share the book. So, so in the folder, it is uh, now saved. And let me clear this picture. So let me clear this one and let's stop this one. And let's share uh, the book, right? Let's share the book. Okay, guys, so look at over here. So this is the answer as I told you. And then after the event, if the event B1, B2, B3 up to BK constitute a partition of a sample space S. So sample space S is given in terms of some partitions B1, B2, B3 up to BK and uh, each of this BI probability of B1 is not equal to zero, B2 is not equal to zero, B3 is not equal to zero. Each of the probabilities of each of these partitions that is non zero for I equal to one to K. Then for any event A, this is my event A, if any event A, the probability of event A that is given by summation of probability of BI intersection A. I runs from one to K, so probability of BI and probability of A given BI. A given bi. This theorem is exactly reverse than this one. See, here it is something like this that here I just gave you two events, but uh, suppose I say that, let me give you one practical example. Suppose uh, in our college, suppose at uh, any of the universities, there are four types of uh, undergraduate courses. One is freshman, then sophomore, then uh, junior and senior. Freshman, sophomore, junior and senior. And suppose I would like to collect the players, volleyball players. So I'm going to collect, um, it is irrespective of any of these years. I mean to say that those who are playing really good volleyball, I would like to select them for my college team. So I'm going to select, suppose, two players from the uh, freshman, three players from uh, sophomore, four players from, suppose, or five players from junior, three players from senior, something like that. So this way, I'm going to make a team. Right. So these are the players and you can see over here that there are some students over there who are playing really good volleyball in freshman. That means that is my B1. So probability of B1 is not equal to zero because there are some players who are playing really good volleyball. There are some players, there are some students, those who are playing really good volleyball in no, sophomore, that is by B2. So probability of B2 is also not equal to zero. There are some good players, those who are playing really good volleyball in junior. So my B3, that is also not uh, a probability of B3 is not equal to zero. Same way, probability of B4, there are some good players in final year students too, and final year, I mean, say seniors level two. So, and I'm looking for my event A is nothing but the volleyball team from that universe, particular university. So that's what we mean by this one, right? So here, instead of two events, I give you the example for four events, same way you can extend the idea for K number of events, and that is given probability of A, this event A is like this. Now, suppose here it is, I'm finding the probability of that team, probability of selecting the volleyball team, that is some of the probability of B1. B1 means soft, uh, freshman, given that uh, multiplied by probability of a volleyball player who is from freshman, given that he's a freshman, probability of B2 means sophomore students multiplied by probability of A. He is a volleyball player given that he is a sophomore student. Same way, probability of A. He is a volleyball player given that he is from junior. Probability of A. He is a volleyball player given that he is from senior. Like this. So that is the total probability. But suppose I ask you that what is the probability that a volleyball, you pick one guy from the volleyball team. And what is the probability of that uh, guy is being selected from the junior class? In that case, I am going to find probability of B3. 
bi means b3 because b3 is the section for the junior class so probability of b3 means when you ask the question other way around there is a bayes theorem so that's why i would say that pro total probability and bayes theorem they are just the other way uh, inverse of each other so once you know the total probability and then after you are going to for the particular case that what is the probability you pick one guy from the probability team i uh, mean volleyball team and then ask the uh, ask yourself that what is the probability of probability of selecting guy he is from senior he is from junior he is from sophomore so in that case we are not going to find probability of a we are going to find the probability of b1 or b2 or b3 or b4 that is the bayes theorem that's what we are going to see so let me just go through this one one more example this proof is really very simple if somebody is interested otherwise let me skip this part and let's go for the another example i would say <coughs> the last example and then after we will go for the bayes theorem in a certain assembly plant three machines b1 b2 b3 makes 30 percentage 45 percentage and 25 percentage respectively so it's an assembly plant machine b1 makes 30 percentage that means probability is i mean to say that it is 0.3 0.45 0.25 0 0 of the products if it is known that the past from the past experience that 2 percentage 3 percentage and 2 percentage of the product uh, products made by each machine respectively are defective that means the product total product from machine b1 is 30 percentage out of this 30 percentage 2 percentage means 0.02 are defective out of this 50 percent means out of 0.45 0.03 are defective out of this 25 percentage means 0.20 out of 0.25 0.02 that is defective question how many um, now suppose that the finished product is randomly selected now this product whatever the products are being produced by all these three machines b1 b2 b3 you pick one product and now once you finish a one once you pick that product what is the probability that product is defective that product is defective now if you ask the question other way around what is the probability that the defective product is being produced by machine 1 or b1 that is bayes rule what is the probability that the def uh, defective i mean the product is defective that means you are looking for just defect that set a probability of total probability that is called the total probability but other if you ask this the question if you ask yourself if you ask somebody that what is the probability that the defective product is being produced by machine b1 or machine b2 in that case we are going to find probability of b1 or probability of b2 or probability of b3 like this so this one is really very simple what is the probability that it is defective right so a is the product defective product b1 product produced by machine b1 product produced by b2 product produced by b3 probability of a is probability of all three combined or probability of b1 and a given b1 b2 and a given b2 b3 and a given b3 all the things are given to us <coughs> probability of b1 is known to us b1 is 0.30 b2 is 0.45 b3 is 0.25 so b1 b2 b3 known to us plug the values probability of a given b1 a given b1 means defective and given that it is from the machine b1 that is 2 percentage so 0.02 so 0.02 0.03 0.03 0.02 0 0.02 this product this is the a1 2 and 3 this 1 2 and 3 three parts just plug the values and you are going to get the probability of a that that product is defective so defective probability of getting the defective product again if b1 b2 b3 data are provided to you as once the product is done then after you pick one item what is the probability that chosen product is defective this is the answer what is the probability that chosen product which is already defective given to you is being produced by machine b2 bayes theorem that's what we are going to learn only i gave you almost i gave you the whole idea about this one again let me give you the tree diagram first probability of b1 is this one a given b1 is this one b2 is this one a given b2 b3 so you can always use the uh, <coughs> tree diagram and now let's start the bayes theorem instead of asking probability of a in the previous example by the rule of elimination suppose that we now consider the problem of finding the conditional probability probability of bi given a see bi given a that means probability of the item chosen item 
is produced by machine B1, you can say, given that A means A is, means it is defective, given that it's defective. So product is already defective. Only you need to figure it out from which machine that product is being produced. So that's what we mean by the base rule. In other words, suppose that a product was randomly selected and it is defective. What is the probability that this product was made by machine BI? Means B1, I runs from one to three because three machines are there, one to N3. The so question of this type of this type can be answered by using the following that is called the Bayes rule. If same thing, B1, B2, B K constitute a partition of a sample space S with each of probability of BI is not equal to zero, it has to be. And for all I equal to one, two, three, up to K, then for any event A in S, the probability of A is not equal to zero. Look at here now, probability of A is not equal to zero, that is now given to you because product is already defective, is given to you. So probability of A is not equal to zero. So probability of BI, see BR, or could be one, could be two, could be three, like this. Probability of BR given A, that is equal to probability of BR, probability of A given BR. This is the definition. Or you can say theorem. And here, total probability, probably B1, A given B1, B2, A given B2, B3, A given B3, and sum, and sum. So whatever total, this is the total probability. Whatever total probability I just found in the previous case, I found this previous case, B1, A given B1, B2, A given B, that is the denominator. That is my denominator. By dotting down in the summation sign, in terms of the summation, summation of B, I, A given B, I, something like this. So B, I, C A given B I. And suppose I'm looking for machine B1. So I'm going to write instead of R, I will be writing R1, B R, B1 given A. B1, probability of A given B1. B2 given A, probability of B2, A given B2, like this. Are you getting me? So it is something like this. It is something like this. Now, again, let me skip the proof and let's go for the example. I just would like to stay with the same example as I told you that machine B1, B2, and B3. So that the idea will be more clear. So now my question, I would like to twist my question that once the products are being produced by machine B1, B2, B3, and if I pick one of the one of the products, and what is the probability that that and that product is defective? So what is the probability of that defective product is being produced by machine B3? That's the question. So product of probability of B3 given A because it is defective from machine B3 that is equal to exactly same over here B3. B3 and A given B3 and total probability over there in the denominator. That's it. So you know B1, all these things are found in the previous case, previous example, example 2.41. So use that one over here. Probably B3 is also given to us. A given B3 is given to us. Just use that one over here. And this, this is the way you can find the base rule. Simple. <clears throat> One more example, a manufacturing firm employs three analytical plants for the design and development for a particular product. For cost reason, all three are used at varying times. In fact, plants one, two, and three are used for 30%, 20%, 50% of the products respectively, right? So plants one, two, and three are used. So plant one is used for 30%, means this is 0 0.30. Plant two is used for 20%, 0 0.20. Plant three is used for 50%, 0 0.50. Okay, the defect rate, the defect rate is also pro provided to you. That means the probability of the defective item, given that it is from, given that it is from plant P1, right? That is 0 0.01. Plant P2, 0, 0 0.03. P3 equal to 0 0.02. What is the probability? where this is a product pro probability of a defective product given plant J, given from plant P1, P2, P3, like this. If a random product was observed and found to be defective, what is the probability that most likely used this possibility? Look at here, guys, look at this question. It says that if a random product was observed and found to be defective, so once all the products are produced, then to, uh, take one random product and that product is defective, what is the probability that most, which plan was most likely used and thus responsible? That means out of, you need to find in this case, the probability of all these three plants, given that the product is defective and whatever the maximum probabilities you are going to find, we can claim that, <clears throat> that it was the, <clears throat> that plan, that was most likely used and responsible for the defective items, the defective item. So that's how you can write. So first of all, I'm going to write, find the probability of P1 given B, 
means probability of that item which is already defective from the plant T1. Use the definition, you will be getting this answer. Then after you, I'm going to replace this one by P2, P2 given D. Use same kind of definition, P2 over here, P2 over here, same denominator, you're going to get this answer. Probability of P3 given D, you're going to get this answer. 0 0.15, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. This is the maximum. That means we can say that <clears throat> the most likely that defective, defective item that was from the plant P3, right? So that's how you can use the Bayes theorem. <clears throat> now I would like to go for a few of the examples. First of all, I would like to go for example to number 2.95. Example 2.95 and 2.97, they are just in the same rhythm. So I would like to combine these both the examples, 2.95 and 2.97. First of all, we will read the examples and then after I will solve both the examples simultaneously and then after we'll go over go for the next example. So first of all, 2.95, let me read this example for you. In a certain region of a country, it is known from past experience that the probability of selecting an adult over 40 years. Here it is adult over 40 years. So now nowadays people over 35, they have some cancer. So don't, don't just this number is just given to confuse us. Just avoid this part. People over 40%, 35% or 60%, we don't bother. We are just concerned about the main matter. So in a certain region of a country, it is known from a past experience, the product of selecting an adult over 40 years of age with cancer is, so adult over 40 years of age with cancer is 0 0.05, right? That means a person who is selected suffering from cancer is probability is 0 0.05. If the probability of a doctor correctly diagnosed up diagnosing a person with cancer, correctly diagnoses a person with cancer. That means suppose somebody is suffering from cancer, he goes to the doctor, doctor is diagnosing him. And suppose doctor says that, yes, he is suffering from cancer and actually he is suffering from cancer. That means doctor, that is called the true statement, right? So it says that doctor currently diagnoses per person with cancer as having the disease Having the disease means actually he is also, of course, he's suffering from cancer and doctor diagnosed the same thing. So that is 0 0.78. And the probability of incorrect diagnosing, that means doctor says that, yeah, he's suffering from, uh, or that guy is already suffering from cancer, but doctor said, no, he is not suffering from cancer. So that is called the incorrect, di incorrect diagnosis. So incorrectly diagnosing a person without cancer, without cancer, as having the disease. See, doctor said he is not suffering from cancer, but actually he is. So that is 0 0.06. What is the probability that an adult is diagnosed as having cancer? So what is the probability that the adult over 40 years of age is diagnosed as having the cancer, right? As having the cancer. And let me give you, continue with this one, the same example, what is the probability, second exercise, second part, that a person diagnosed as having a cancer actually has a disease. See here, now the reverse way. What is the probability that a person diagnosed as having cancer actually has the disease? First of all, let me answer my question nine, 2.95 and then after 2.97. 2.97. So let me stop sharing my book. And again, I would like to go for the whiteboard so that I can explain to you over here on the board. So first of all, let me write it down for you guys. So it is, oh, where is my pen? My pen is here. Okay. So 2.95. Example 2.95. Exercise. 2.7 base rule. Base rule. Okay, 2.95. Now we can consider the events like this. Suppose C is the event and adult selected has cancer. Selected has cancer. D is the diagnosis. So the adult is diagnosed as having cancer. D adult is 
diagnosed D I A G N O S E D, right? Diagnosed as having cancer. So having cancer, right? So first of all, you are given uh, probability of an adult over the age of 40 has a cancer and that is given to that is 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So naturally I can write that probability of C dash C complement that is one minus probability of C, one minus probability of C and that is equal to one minus 0 0.05. So that is equal to 0 0.95. So this is the information I can get from this first part. Okay, second is <clears throat> probability of that uh, he is uh, suffering from cancer and he is diagnosed correctly. So that is equal to 0 0.78 is given. Yes, 0 0.78. And uh, another thing is probability of he is diagnosed and he is, uh, let me read for you. The probability of selecting an adult over 40 years of age with the cancer is 0 0.05. Makes sense. If the probability of a doctor correctly diagnosing a person which can, with cancer as having a cancer is 0.78. Makes sense. Perfect. 78. And the probability of incorrectly diagnosing, incorrectly diagnosing, diagnosing a person without cancer, person without cancer. So diagnosis is there, incorrectly diagnosis, and person without cancer that is equal to 0 0.06, 0 0.06, right? So these are the informations provided to us. And now I would like to go for the probability of D diagnosis. That is nothing but probability of C intersection D plus because both are mutually exclusive event. Once a patient is suffering, suppose somebody is, says that the person is diagnosed as cancer, that means you cannot say that uh, person is diagnosed without cancer, right? So it is either way. That means I would say something like this, a total probability example, that this is my cancer and this is my non-cancer. And this is the event D, this is the event D. This is my event D, D is a diagnosis, right? That is so C dash intersection D, C dash intersection D. So that is equal to, now I can write this one in the form of probability of C given that probability of D given C plus probability of C dash and probability of D given C dash. That is equal to probability of C is 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Probability of D given C that is equal to 0 0.78, 0 0.78. Then after 0 0.C dash is 0 0.95. And probability of D given C dash that is equal to 0 0.06. And that is equal to, if you use your calculator, you are going to get 0 0.95. Let me use my calculator. If you use this calculator, you're going to get and 0.95 and 0.96. So that is equal to 0 0.096, 0 0.096. So that is the probability. What is the probability that the adult over 40 years of age is diagnosed as having the cancer? He's diagnosed as having the cancer. So as having the cancer, right? So that is equal to 0. Point this one. Now I would like to con consider example 2.97 and 2.97 says that uh, what is the probability that a person diagnosed as having a cancer actually has a cancer. Person is diagnosed as having the cancer. Person is already diagnosed as having the cancer actually has a cancer. That is this one. That is equal to probability of C intersection D divided by probability of D. Probability of D. And that is equal to C intersection D that is equal to what is C intersection D? C intersection D, probability of C intersection D, that is this part. Let me just change my color. C intersection D is this part. C intersection D is this one, so that is this one. That means I would say that 0 0.05 multiplied by 0 0.78 and divided by probability of D, total probability is 0 0.096. And whatever the number you're going to get, that must be your answer. That must be your answer like this. 
Then after example number 2.99, 2. Point, uh, yeah, ex, oh, that is a homework assignment, 2.99 and 2.101. 2.101. And now I would like to go for the example 2.118. So let me save this one and then after I can go for the next example, let me save this. Okay, so saving. And now let me clear this screen, clear this one. And then let me stop sharing my whiteboard and I would like to share my book again. For the next example, as I told you, 2099 and 101 homework, and I would like to go for review exercise. Very nice example, 2.118, 2.18. Read the example. A certain form of cancer is known. Certain form of cancer, right, guys? Um, you can add example number 100 also, 2.100. That's also base rule. 100, 101, all our base rules. Anyway, let me go for this example and then after we will go for uh, last one. So example 2.18. A certain form of cancer is known to be found in women over 60 with the probability 0 0.07. Makes sense, right? So I can say that C stands for the event a woman over 60 has a cancer and P is the event the test uh, what it says, a blur test. Okay, blur test exists for the detection of the disease, but the test is not infallible. In fact, it is known that 10% of the time, the test gives a false negative. False negative, so P is a test, gives a positive result. False negative means P dash, and positive means P. So test result is positive, that stands for P. Okay. In fact, it is known that 10% of the time, the test gives the false negative. Okay, test negative means the test incorrectly gives the negative result. And the 5% of the time, the test gives a false positive, right? Tails give false C. First of all, try to, first of all, try to understand this concept. 10% of the time, the test gives a false negative. False negative, that means the negatively false result is given. That means test is incorrectly gives a negative result. Right, negative result means suppose somebody is uh, suffering from cancer, but negative, everyone wants the negative result, right? That means he is not suffering from cancer, but the test gives the false negative. That means he is not suffering from cancer, but that result is false. Test gives a false result. That means he is suffering from cancer. That is the meaning. Five percentage of the time, the test gives the false positive, right? That means suffer is suppose somebody is not suffering from cancer. And, uh, but test says that it is, he is suffering from cancer like this, but that is a false. That means he is not suffering from cancer. So incorrectly gives a positive result like this, right? Positive result means suffering from cancer, but incorrect means he is actually not suffering from cancer. If a woman over 60 is known as, uh, known to have taken to the, I'm sorry. If a woman over 60 is known to have taken the test and received a favorable, favorable means non everyone wants non-negative uh, negative result, right? What is the probability that C has the disease? What is the probability that C has the disease? Just keep in mind this thing here is 0 0.07, 10 percentage and 5 percentage. These are the informations with us. Let me just stop sharing the book with you and we can solve this example on the whiteboard. Two point one one eight. Two point. 118. Good example, I would say. Okay, so consider the events like this. Let, let us consider, consider, suppose C, a woman over 60 has a cancer. Has a cancer. And P, the test gives a positive result. Test gives a positive result. Probability of that having cancer is 0 0.07 given to us. 
and uh, 0.07 so naturally probability of c dash that is equal to 1 minus probability of c so that is equal to 1 minus 0 0.07 so that is equal to 0 0.93 0 0.93 second part probability of probability of what uh, taste gives I'm sorry, it says that 10% uh, of the time the taste gives a false negative. False negative means uh, false negative. So P dash and C, false negative. That is equal to 0 0.1. If you want, please try to distinguish between this probability and this P stands for this one. Taste, you can say small P or you can write P1, whatever you want. Capital P stands for probability and small P stands for negative result. I mean, say positive result, right? So P dash given C that is equal to 0 0.01. And uh, last part is given to you that is equal to probability of, probability of, yes, false uh, five percentage that is a false negative. So false negative that means C dash, no cancer and small p. And that is equal to five percentage means 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So now question is probability of, what is the probability if the woman over 16 known to have taken the test and receive a favorable means negative result, means she is not suffering from cancer, right? Negative result, where is it? Uh, negative result. What is the probability that C has the disease? Oh, what is the C has the disease? That means probability of C uh, given that P dash. So this can be given as probability of C times probability of probability of C times probability of uh, P dash given C divided by probability of C probability of P dash given C plus probability of C dash and probability of P dash given C dash. That is equal to probability of C is 0 0.07. P dash given C is 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.07 and 0 0.1 plus probability of C dash that is equal to 0 0.93. Here it is 0 0.93 and then after P probability of, yes, P dash given C dash, right? So probability of P dash given C dash means probability of P dash given P C dash is uh, this one, just one minute. So probability of uh, P dash given C, so P dash given C dash, C dash is equal to this one. So probability of P dash given C dash, so that is equal to one minus this one, agree? So probability of, I would say something like this, uh, C dash is okay, probability of P dash given C dash. P dash given C dash. Given C dash, that is equal to one minus probability of P given C dash. That is equal to one minus 0 0.05. 1 minus 0 0.05, like this, right? So that is equal to 0 0.93 is this one and 1 minus 0 0.05, that is equal to 0 0.95. So 0 0.95. And this is the number, whatever you're going to get, that is the answer. So that's how you can find the probability of an event if a woman over 60 is known to have taken that test and received a favorable result, what is the probability that she has the disease? So what is the probability that she has the disease, right? And receive a favorable answer, negative. Okay, so positive result, negative result means P dash is given and C has a disease and result is negative. So this is the base theorem, base theorem.
I can take one more example and then after we can stop because that will be the end of this chapter. And uh, then after we will start the next chapter, chapter three next week. So I would say which example, I would say that we can go for example number, uh, suppose uh, which one. We can go over any of these examples actually. Let's go for example number 100, 100 is good too. And 101 and 100, they are almost similar. Let's go for 100, example 100. So let me save this one, clear the screen, stop setting, book example number 100 yes little go back a regional telephone company operates three identical real, uh, real stations at different locations during one year period during a one year period one year period the number of manufacturer uh, malfunctions reported by each station and the causes are shown below. I repeat, a regional telephone company operates three identical relay stations at different locations. One is here, another is supposed 100 miles far. Third one is 150 miles far from here like this in the other direction. During a one year period, the number of malfunctions reported by each station and the causes are shown below. Problems with electricity electricity supplied, A, B, and C, stations A, B, and C. Computer, in, so here it is electricity supply, that is two, one, and one. Two problems, one problem, one problem. Computer malfunctioning, malfunctioning for station A, four, station B, three, C, two. Malfunctioning electrical equipment, five, four, two, caused by other human errors, seven, seven, and five, right? Human errors. Okay, question is, suppose that the malfunctioning was reported. Now malfunctioning means this second part. Please keep in mind this thing, this one. Malfunctioning is reported. What is, and it was found to be caused by other human errors. So malfunction is reported and that was caused by other human errors means this part, other human errors, fourth number. What is the probability that it came from station C? What is the probability that it came from station C? Right, so this is B, uh, I mean, second event and fourth event with respect to station C. So I would like to write this one in the form of, just keep these numbers, I will write it down for you. Otherwise you can keep in mind and let me share my whiteboard. I would say that suppose example number 100 is the event a malfunctioning by other human errors. Is the event you can say a malfunctioning malfunctioning by other human errors other human human errors and a is nothing but station a station a b stands for station b C stands for station C. You can say like this, you don't have to change this thing. And you are asked to find the probability of station C given that a malfunctioning by the other human errors, like this. So that is equal to, again, this is the Bayes rule. Bayes rule, that is probability of C times probability of E given C. Probability of E given C divided by probability of A, probability of E given A, plus probability of B, probability of E given B, plus probability of C, probability of E given C. Total probability, this denominator is a total probability, always in Bayes theorem, total probability. So that is equal to probability of C, uh, you can find all these probabilities. Uh, let me look at the numbers. Oh my gosh. Let me look at the numbers probability of C that is equal to how many total numbers are there? Uh, for station A, 
problems with the electricity supplied, computer mal that is four, computer malfunctioning four, mal malfunctioning electric equipment five, caused by other human errors that is seven. So total faults 18 for station B, total faults 15, for station C, total faults 10. So total are 43, total are 43, right? So I can write like this that uh, malfunctioning electric equipment, right? Malfunctioning by the other human errors that is given by five divided by 10. So I can write that is equal to here, five divided by 10 and uh, right, five divided by 10 and probability of C that is nothing but total number are 10 out of total 43. So 43. So actually it is other way around, 10 divided by 43 times this one, whole divided by, okay. So here it is seven divided by 18 and 18 divided by 43 for tower A, for station A. Seven divided by 15 and 15 divided by 43 for tower B and this will remain the same. 10 divided by 43 and 5 divided by 10, 5 divided by 10. And use your calculator, whatever the number you're gonna get, that is your answer. So that's how you can use the base theorem. And make sure, because you are finding the probability, your answer must lie between zero and one, probability of the event. So you, it must be between zero and one, C given E every time. So I saw a number of examples over here and guys, this is the end of this chapter. So let me just save this file and let me stop over here. I'm going to upload this file on YouTube. So whenever you want it, you can just try to see this one and try to upgrade your knowledge and try to perform well in the exam and try to get good command over this subject. Thank you so much. And uh, let me stop over here. I'll save and let me clear this slide. Stop setting and uh